Once we've got our unit set up set correctly, what I want to look at doing is also setting the preferences inside of 3D Studio Max. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my Customize menu and I'm going to come right the way down here to Preferences. That's going to open up my Preferences dialog and in here we've got a few of the, uh, the tabs. We've got General Tab, Files, Viewport, various bits and pieces. Now we don't need to change every single one of these settings and we don't need to, to, to worry about absolutely everything but there's just a few things that I do personally uh, whenever I come to 3D Studio Max for, for the first time and I know that it's a new install. I'll go first of all to the Files tab and I'll make sure that Increment on Save is switched on. Now this isn't necessarily switched on by default. I have changed some of these preferences so you may well find that yours are different to mine. But really what I'm interested in is making sure that that's clicked on. Now what that means is that every time I do a control S to save a file, it's going to give me my file name and then an 01 after it. And then the next time it'll be 02 and the next time after that it'll be 03 and then 04 and 05. So what you'll get is a complete construction history of what you're working on. It also means that if at any point you decide that uh, you might be going to be doing something silly and you're not quite sure what will happen next, then you can always just do a quick control S to save, you've got a clean copy of your file and then you can come back to that later on if, if what you were doing didn't quite work out. What I also like to do is have my number of auto back files set to 6 and what that's going to do is that's going to give me sort of the last half hour or so if it's saving every five minutes or so that's my backup intervals here uh, and I'm saving sort of six in a row that's going to give me 30 minutes as my last backup that's always useful to have. The next thing I want to do is to go to my on my viewports tab and I want to make sure that I've got back face cull on object creation ticked. That's very important. The reason for that is that if I bring objects or models in from other programs I want to make sure that I can see if there's an error on them. I don't want to be able to sort of see if faces are, are, are flipped the wrong way. I want to be able to see that. I don't want the uh, the interface sort of tricking me as it were into thinking that I've got it right when I haven't and then finding out at render time that there's a problem with the the surface and the lighting isn't showing up properly on it. So backface column object creation will just help me with that. I've also got my, my display drivers here and you can see that I've got a, a, a GeForce GTX 220 installed in my machine and I can now click on the configure driver and I can go in and just make sure there's a few things set here the way I want them to be. First of all, I'm going to make sure that I've got my background textures and my download texture size set to 512 and 1024, that's the maximum. Or I could click on the match bitmap size as closely as possible for both of those. And also my texel lookup set to anisotropic and my mitmap lookup set to linear. What that's going to do is it's going to mean that every time I use or I see a 2D image that I've applied onto one of my 3D objects, it's going to display that in the highest possible resolution that it can. And that's always going to be a useful thing because it means then I'm not going to get any nasty surprises between what I'm seeing in my viewport and what I'm going to get in my render. I'm probably also going to tick redraw scene on Windows exposure. That's because I don't really want to keep any of my previous scenes in memory. It's a feature of 3D Studio Max that's on lower end graphics cards if you have this unchecked then it will remember what were your last viewport configuration was so that you can flick between four screen and one screen very very quickly and very very easily nowadays when you've got cards um, such as I have in here as the uh, the GTX 260 it will mean that that's a fast enough and powerful enough card that you don't have to worry about doing that anymore and so we can we can just have that box checked so I'll click on OK to close that dialog box and I'll move along to some of my other, some of my other um, tabs. I'm going to ignore the gamma and the LUT because I don't want to play around with that because it will um, destroy the gamma settings of my monitor. I may well have already got those set up, uh, but I certainly don't want any strange things happening. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the rendering tab, and by default it's set like this with flag with back, NTSC, and odd on the field order. And they're the three things that we're going to change here. We don't need to worry about the rest of it, but we do need to worry about these. Now the video color check refers to uh, an old analog way of broadcasting and if your colors were outside of a broadcastable range for an analog transmitter each pixel that was outside of that color range would be flagged with black 
and there's nothing you can do about that. So it's actually better if you scale the saturation on these rather than have them flagged with black. Then at least you can play around and maybe recolorize in post-production your work or in Photoshop or something like that. And the only reason why I'm going to flick from NTSC to PAL is because I'm working in England at the moment and we use PAL as our television standard. If I was in the US, I would set that to NTSC. It, there's, there's no real preference between the two. It's just because I happen to be in the UK. Again, because I happen to be in the UK, I may well be asked to do an animation where I use field ordering, and in which case, because we use the lower field first, I'm going to set that to field order as even. So that's all I need to do with that. The only other thing I really want to do here is go to my gizmos tab, and you notice that I've got free rotation turned off. And that's because I find that the free rotation handle when we're rotating objects can actually get in the way very, very slightly. So in this instance, I want to turn that off. So I'm going to turn that off there. There we go.